Hey guys, it's Heather. Welcome to Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk. I'm the wife, and this week I've got something special for you. I stole the truck from Tim because I needed to have a girls weekend in Denver. Why? Why can't I take my Mazda? Because I needed to go to Ikea. So, I have this special thing for you. I'm gonna take my four friends with me, actually. One friend, one sister, one cousin, and we're gonna have some fun and hope you stick around. Tim's sister-in-law reporting live for pickup truck and SUV talk talk cam. I think that might be the website. We're in Denver, Colorado. Went to Ikea with Kat and Lisa and my sister. Hello, hello, hello. So we are uh, coming to you with a woman's point of view of the truck. I haven't driven it, um, I'm just a passenger. The truck Krista keeps referring to is the 2021 Ford F-150 EV model. Um, it's fairly smooth to ride in. I like the uh, dual uh, sunroofs. Um, <clears throat> one thing I'm not a fan of is uh, there's no independent temperature control for the back seat passengers. No bueno. In the front seat, it's roasting when you're in the sun. In the back seat, it's freezing. So that is not a fantastic thing. I like the sidestep, makes it easy to get into. Even though I'm a tall chick, it even helps me get in. Heather, the, the handle in the back, in the, in the sidebar, make it really easy to get in for short people who are only like five feet. Mm. It does have it, it handles next to the doors. Heather, what about from a driver's perspective? Well, if they've watched the channel before, all they have to do is tune in to me driving it from Michigan and you'll see most of my perspective. In Denver, it's done a really good job as far as handling. I've been able to park in a lot of small little spaces. Oh, yeah. Um, we've used the overhead camera a lot, and that's come in pretty handy. The back of the parking camera has an aerial overhead shot is what she's talking about. The coolest thing, not just a little backup camera, and it, it very clearly shows you where your corners are. It's phenomenal. It's mm -hmm. amazing. <laughs> My sister just realized that it beeps because it is an EV and so um, like any kind of industrial like a uh, cat or any um, kind of industrial equipment or machinery when it beeps it backs up and the truck does the same thing and so she was kind of surprised by that. I just didn't understand why it was beeping but we're just quiet. We have to let people know we're moving. One thing my sister did not like on the drive over here is that uh, the predictive um, the uh, cruise control, <clears throat> the pickup has a sensor on it that allows you to turn the cruise control on or off, but if it is snowing or raining and you have inclement weather, it wouldn't allow her to turn on the cruise control from Scotts Bluff to Cheyenne because of that weather. And I understand that's a great safety feature, but it's also a little bit annoying. Yeah, and it's one of those things where as long as you've got the manual handy and you know where to clean off on the grill, uh, the sensors are right below the headlights. And I will, when we get back to the house, I'll take a picture of where they're at. Yesterday, when it happened, I had rain and snow mix and so it was sticking to the front of the grill and I stopped and pulled over and cleared off what I thought was the sensors for the adaptive cruise but in actuality they were the parking sensors and I also cleaned off the front uh, video camera thinking that that was a part of it too and it wasn't until I called my handy dandy husband and he figured out wait a minute it's the black squares by then everything had dried up the sun was shining and I could use adaptive cruise again. So FYI for new pickup truck drivers who have that adaptive cruise, find out where that sensor is before you're in a rain and snow kind of situation. So you know what you need to clean off and, and be prepared. So you don't have to drive I-80 without cruise. And I want to show you something really cool that my sister just showed me. So I That's wanted right. to show the Denver traffic 
and this really cool feature on the speedometer, you can set it so it has a, a predictive um, three car length oh. space. I can adjust it. So and so smaller. it will automatically detect the speed limit the vehicle in front of you is going. Oh, here you and in order to keep three car lengths distance, which is a safe distance, two so lengths three. actually, but there's it will two. automatically adjust your own speed there's one. to make sure that you're in a safe distance behind other cars which four. in a congested area like Denver is pretty awesome because there's a lot of tailgating that goes on here and if more people use this feature there probably be less accidents and he's just praying Heather don't get in an accident and this is cool I like all the icons Timmy maybe you've already reviewed all the icons but the icons where you can click and it shows you like the gas stations and any traffic conditions. It's pretty awesome. All in all, I like this truck. Okay, so in the video, Chris had talked about the adaptive cruise control and I wanted to show you where that's at. Um, like she said, when I was driving on snow and red, excuse me, snow and rainy roads, the adaptive cruise control would not set. It refused to set. It said the sensors were blocked. And I got a message kind of like this picture. So I came outside of the truck and I cleaned off these little sensors. Thinking those were the adaptive cruise control. That's the parking cruise. That's the parking control or the parking sensor. Then I cleaned off this little camera. That's just a front camera. It doesn't do anything with adaptive cruise. So finally I called my handy dandy husband and he did some research and discovered that the adaptive cruise control, sorry for the background noise, I am in Denver. It's a lot noisier than our gearing house. The adaptive cruise control is behind this black panel. Now, this, at least according to the images it is. So this panel, I'm guessing, has to be cleaned off or there can't be any debris in front of it. I'm not quite sure how this panel could turn off a, an adaptive cruise control, but I'm not an expert in trucks. I just get to drive them. So hopefully Tim will be able to answer those questions and correct anything that I've said incorrectly. Please don't be a troll. Be nice. Okay? Hey guys, remember I was shopping and today we went to Ikea. So, you bought a couple different things, and after market, Tim added on a really cool toolbox. It lays on top of it, doesn't it? Or you may have to move some of the stuff. You may have to just shift some things. So, so far, this truck has been super easy to back up. Put it exactly where I want it to. We drove in Denver traffic. Sorry about the background noise. We are in the IKEA parking garage. Um, so let's see. I didn't get in any accidents in Denver traffic. <laughs> Make sure everybody tells Tim that. I was able to park at a busy restaurant in a in a strip mall. And look at all this good stuff that we got into the back. See? There's so much more. See? Lisa using her muscles. <laughs> Lisa, you said you had something about the uh, tailgate. Okay, well, I'm short, so the tailgate button is at my basically eye level. And 
earlier when I was trying to get it open because we had to make some adjustments to the load in the back from Ikea. And um, I was, couldn't figure out how to open it. I was like, this isn't opening. What's going on? And I realized all I did do was gently touch the center and it would open, which was awesome because my truck is really hard and I got to like yank it to get it open. Lisa, what year is your truck? <laughs> okay, it's a good team. <laughs> And that's okay. It still works. Uh, it's okay. Classic. Catherine, any comments, Catherine? No, I have no comments. Okay. <laughs> and I think that's all we have. in the back seat. <laughs> she had a great time at Ikea. She's just I along did. for the ride. I do like all the cup holders. Just along for the ride. And it is weird that some of these cup holders are square, but they seem to hold a, a round bottle just perfectly fine. Yeah, but it would be nice if there was an armrest in the back seat, too. That bench is awesome for when you have stuff you need to carry in here. Yeah, if there was an armrest back but there that had a cup holder, that'd be nice. But, I mean, all in all, it's it's a very nice truck. Sad to say, every trip must come to an end. And we did end up going back to Ikea today. Who knew that everything would sell out on a Saturday and restock on a Sunday? So, I was able to get some of the stuff today that I couldn't get yesterday. So, let me show you my haul. I also went to Target, got some boy clothes. Got a new beach bag full of bins for Legos. And then those are boxes of Lego cabinets. And I'll have to show you when they're all done. Um, why are they in the back end? Because if you've ever been to a big city, you know you don't wanna keep anything in the pickup box overnight. So I flipped up the seats and tossed everything in the back end. And I just figured instead of tossing everything in the back for uh, the drive home, I would just leave it here. I didn't want to have to lift it more than I had to. So, hope you guys had fun watching this video and stick around for some more things. If you're interested in other pickups that Tim might be driving or other reviews, check out the videos on the side. Until next time, the wife is signing off.